Hi, Gary Hoover here. You know, I'm a business junkie. I grew up in a GM factory town. Nobody could tell me anything about GM. So I discovered Fortune Magazine, this issue, when I was 12 years old, and I've subscribed ever since. This is a Fortune 500. It comes out every year. It lists the 500 biggest companies in America. When the new Fortune 500 came out a couple of weeks ago, it was the 49th year in a row that I've dashed out of, drawn it out of the mailbox, dashed to my room, and gone down through the 500 companies to see who's doing well, who's doing poorly, who's new on the list, who's dropped off the list, who's been acquired. And by looking at those lists, and there's a lot of data in there, number of employees, return on sales, return on assets, uh, a, a stock market return for investors, how big the company is, uh, what are the biggest companies in each state and each industry. It's just a wonder of a wealth of data. And, and every year when I look at the list, I learn new things. So today what I wanted to touch on, I draw out the new fortune. The new Fortune 500 list just came out. In June of 2011, I looked at the giant companies, people who did over $20 billion a year in sales. That's a little over 100 of these Fortune 500 companies. So these are the giants. And what I looked at, one of the several measures you can use to look at profitability is one I believe is very important. And you can compare different industries. You can't compare financial service companies Go into that in a separate discussion. You can compare them within financial services industries, but other industries, airlines, retailing, uh, railroads, manufacturing, high tech, soft drinks, you can compare apples to apples by using return on assets. And what I did is I looked at their 2010, their new last year's uh, return on assets, and I averaged it with their 2007, the last pre-recession year. So I can see kind of a stabilized, a great boom year, uh, uh, relatively speaking, and then here they are still coming out of the recession, uh, rather than just looking at a single year. And, and within that, I want to find what are the most profitable giant companies in America, measured by return on assets. Number one on my list, I'm not going to be surprised by this one, 22.5% average is Microsoft. An amazing, remarkable company. Bill Gates, one of the great entrepreneurs of our era. An interesting thing is, are these companies on the way up or are they at the peak on the way down? As a user of Microsoft products, and actually a believer in the company, I root for the company. I, uh, I love what they've accomplished. But as a user, I believe that they're post-peak, that they're over the last several years, a number of their key products seem to have gone down and down. And I think you can see it in market share data, certainly in stuff like their browser. Um, and uh, so I hope they turn it around. But I think, you know, on the other hand, they were real high in both years. And it's a phenomenal number. The next best company is only three quarters as good as that. So this is just a phenomenal achievement. And then right behind it, another company you've heard of, Apple, has figured out how to sell products at relatively high prices, yet people want them and want them in quantities. Their competitors kind of get shoved to the side. Uh, amazing company. And their number's actually rising. They were higher than this number in 2010. So they've been going up. Another company you know, Google, has a real profitable business model, 15.7. Another company, Intel, pure hardware, but boy, you talk about such a tough competitive field, Asian competitors, AMD, all these people. Man, that's it's amazing what they've accomplished. And then, maybe to me, the most amazing of all, 3M, because it's a much older company. And here it is, right in the pack, these five great technology companies, but these, these people are doing something right, because the great technology companies of the past, uh, Alcoa was a technology company at one point, and uh, General Electric was, and inventing the light bulb or whatever and all that. Singer sewing machine, IBM, which is still a great company, but boy, it's not as great as it was uh, prior to the 90s when it almost collapsed. Thing is, and I understand 3M lets a lot of their people work like a day a week on their own projects to try to look for innovative stuff. Same kind of idea that Google does now, but 3M's been doing it for a long time. So I especially admire them. But high-tech companies. Now, you'll hear me say in my talks, I don't think high-tech companies last as long as, say, consumer products companies, Procter & Gamble, Colgate-Palmolive, Coca-Cola, um, uh, because things change so fast and people make new inventions and take your market away from you. So these guys, I think if they're lucky, they'll last, you know, 50, 60 years if they're, if they're an industry leader and really run right. But uh, the chance that they'll last 100, 150 years is much lower that makes 3M all the more impressive as an older company. And Intel is now getting some years on it, so we'll see how she unfolds. Now, the next company on the list is one of those time-honored consumer products companies, 
Coca-Cola. Went kind of asleep a few years ago, brought it back. Never went really downhill, but his stock stopped going up and they changed CEOs and now they seem to have the right people and they were cooking again and really blowing the doors off. I'm a big fan of retelling. I've studied retelling all my life. I've worked in retelling. I did a startup in retelling or two or three. And, and I was, even myself, surprised to find a big retailer. TJX operates TJ Maxx and Marshalls and Home Goods. 14.3, an amazing number. And retelling is so competitive and selling apparel against Kohl's and Walmart and Target and Pennies and all those people out there. The Gap. Um, it's phenomenal. And so I, this prompted me to go study that company and to get their annual report. It's always a free PDF. Download off their website. Read their uh, chairman or CEO's letter. Read about the background of the people running the company. And I really, I really came to have tremendous respect for them and what they're doing. And I really didn't know that before I went through this list and looked at it. Real shocker. Another retailer, a company called Publix, a giant supermarket chain out of Lakeland, Florida. They're uh, now as far up last I looked as uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Well, Publix is employee-owned. It's a private company. It's the only one on the list you can't buy stock in. Usually, private companies aren't in the fortune list because they don't reveal their profits and sales. Nobody requires them to. Publix is one company that does. It's broadly owned by its employees. Amazing company. And in a low-margin bi business like supermarkets, they're bringing home a 14 percent return on assets. That's incredible. Um, the next company on the list, one of the old line pharmaceutical companies, Big Pharma, Eli Lilly from my home state of Indiana, a great company. I would say if you look at overall the big pharmaceutical companies, Merck and Pfizer and all those guys, they used to more frequently be up at the top of this list, but they've all fallen down as they seem to have lost their real drive to innovate and their focus on fundamental research and curing diseases like they used to do. And, and now they're all caught up in all this TV advertising about, uh, I don't know if same secondary drugs is the right phrase, but they just seem to have lost their way. Maybe Lilly has lost their way a little less so. I have not studied the industry in depth that much. Last, last, a great number, 13.5% Exxon Mobil. Now, here's a company that makes a huge amount of dollars of profits every year, so they get a lot of headlines. But that comes from having a high rate of return on assets, 13.5%, applied to a big asset base. Man, those oil wells and all those refineries and all that stuff they got cost a huge amount of money. But in fact, in terms of how effectively they use that money, how good is their return on investment, they're just barely above half what Microsoft is at and substantially below Apple and Google. So when you talk about them, it turns out it's a really profitable company. Yes, it is a really profitable company. It's behind these other guys. Anyway, those are the kind of things that I draw out of looking at these lists. You can look at Forbes and a bunch of other magazines. Start with the Fortune 500. I, um, I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.